In 1967, 20th Century Fox, like all major studios of that particular era, were really going through difficult financial problems. Still reverberating from the colossal cost of Cleopatra, believe it or not, way back in 1963, they all heartedly signed on with this particular idea. Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne was a best-selling book. They'd fought to get the rights, and now they were ready to roll the cameras on what they thought was going to be an absolute mega smash. You see, the idea originally was to cast all big names. Now, the names in the frame to play, of course, those big roles included the brilliant Betty Davis. Betty was keen to get a meteor role after spent many years in horror flicks like The Nanny and whatever happened to Baby Jane. Lucille Ball was also down for that particular role, the big role that eventually was played by Susan Haywood. And she too didn't necessarily need the money as one of the richest women in Hollywood, all thanks to her TV series, but was looking to reinvent herself as a more serious actress. But 20th Century Fox needed something to get some attention to the movie. And so they turned to the very much alien, disorientated and very ill Judy Garland. Now, Judy Garland, you see, Fox quite liked her. Quite frankly, she was cheap. It didn't cost too much to get her on board. And they knew just signing Judy Garland was going to get a lot of publicity. And Julie, Judy signed on. In fact, so much so that she decided to go a press conference. She appeared on quiz shows like What's My Line to help promote the movie. Things were looking good. Judy seemed back on top form, but not for long. You see, Fox really didn't want her. Her last big film, A Child in Waiting, had not been a success, and it had been quite a number of years since Judy had graced the screens. But again, they knew they could make money and publicity from her. Now, what they decided to do in order to make Judy Garland walk was quite frankly knowing that she still had an addiction to pills and booze. They kept her waiting hours and hours on set, calling her at 7am and not required until 4pm, knowing by this time that Judy would become disorientated or either flat out drunk. Sad news, I know. Of course, that duly happened and 20th Century Fox decided to fire Judy Garland, getting even more publicity, and once again for a movie they hoped to make a lot of money on. But they hadn't banked on this. Both Lucille Ball and Betty Davis then turned down the role, saying they didn't like the direction of the company or indeed the movie with its bad language and nudity. So they were casting around, quite frankly, and quite desperate. And for a while, they even thought about rehiring Judy Garland again. Talk about rigging it out twice. But more importantly, what they decided to do was offer the role of Helen Lawson to Susan Haywood, who, of course, would be dubbed singing those now famous tunes. The only thing that Judy Garland managed to get out of the debacle of Valley of the Dolls was the copper-plated pantsuit that she wore at her Palace Theatre engagements in New York. She didn't even get the very final salary because... Quite frankly, she didn't have the money for lawyers or indeed the energy and reserves to take on yet another battle. It's a strange ending to a wonderful career for a wonderful artist, but that truly is what goes on in the world of Hollywood. And for those people that think, oh, it doesn't happen like that today, it does, trust me, it's simply all over the headlines, but in a different form. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.